Welcome home, children of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. All those able, please rise for our call to worship. For us, there is but one God, from whom all things come, and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things come, and through whom we live. Let us pray. O God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us, we ask, with your Holy Spirit, that we may celebrate you and worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. seated. The gospel of our Lord teaches us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God. God, we are slow to model our lives after Jesus. We are proud when we should be humble. Weak when we should be strong, overbearing when we should be meek, and hold our money too tightly, and do not trust with your lives, our fortunes, our futures. 
We need more of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Heal us from our sin. Fill us with your love so that we may follow Jesus more faithfully and more fully. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you and I are forgiven in Jesus Christ and be at peace. Amen. It is great to be here worshiping God on this Lord's Day with all of you, a special Welcome to any visitors among us. We hope and pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. I would ask that at this time, all of you sign the pew register, and if need be, pass the register down the pews. I'll call your attention to some announcements. Please note the inserts. We have done a, we have done, we continue to try to do a great job of showing everybody where they can park on Sunday morning. It is, quite obvious that we have ongoing parking issues. So here it's in black and white, again, where to park if you cannot park immediately behind um, or in front of the church. On the back of this insert, on the parking insert, is our weekly church calendar. And on the goldenrod color insert, we have a number of things to call your attention to. We have a very vibrant and active church. We are always on the go, so to speak. So take a look at what's happening here in our church and see if God is leading you to get involved in some shape or form now or in the near future. I'm blessed this morning to lead worship with the Reverend Les Comey. Many of y'all know Les um, from his number of years in the community. And he is, of course, over the last six months, been on staff here at the church, working about five hours primarily with older adults and leading Bible studies and helping with visitation. I am delighted that Les is here worshiping, I mean leading worship with us this morning. We are excited this morning about the new members coming into the church, which we will hear more about in just a little while. But at this time, I'd like to invite all the children to come forward for a moment with Mr. Adam Bros. All right, good morning. Good morning. Any more coming down? All right. So what are we doing here today? What are we doing here today at church? I'll tell you. We are here to worship God. And we're about to read a couple of uh, passages of scripture that tell us about how awesome God is. God is so awesome. If you look up to the sky, you see the sun, and God made the sun, and we just sang about that. And you look up at night, and you see the stars, and you see the moon, and you think, man, God is so awesome. And you go to the mountains, and you see how big they are, and you go to a, a fast-flowing river, and you think, wow, God is awesome. But no matter what, God has made all of that so big and so large, and sometimes we can feel very, very small. But God loves you, and God loves you, and God loves you, and you, and you. He loves us more than anything, and I want you to know that. So let's say a prayer this morning. Dear God, thank you for making everything that you've made in creation. Thank you for being so powerful, and thank you for loving us and being with us no matter what. In your name we pray, amen. And here are your worship bags right over here. Let's pray. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, 
let us hear you. Amen. The scripture, the psalm this morning is going to be Psalm 111, and that is what the psalm that Hunter is preaching from. So hear now the word of God from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works and in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just and all his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Word of the Lord. The gospel lesson this morning is from Mark 1 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum where the, when the Sabbath came, and he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. As praying people, people who pray, we pour our hearts out to God. We pour our hearts out to God for healing, for safety, for a loved one, for employment, for strength, for guidance, for wisdom, for patience, for forgiveness. On and on we pour our hearts out to God. Maybe, maybe every now and then when a sunrise at the beach or a sunset over the marsh strikes us to our core, maybe every now and then we utter a sentence of praise. The author of Psalm 111 cannot contain his or her praise. Listen to the psalm using the contemporary translation called The Message. Hallelujah! I give thanks to God with everything I've got. God's works are so great. Splendor and beauty mark His craft. His generosity never gives out. His miracles are his memorial. This God of grace, this God of love. 
He gave food to those who feared him. He remembered to keep his ancient promises. The author of this psalm was awed by God's greatness. How about you? When was the last time that you were awed by God's greatness? I see the greatness of God when I look at my family, when I watch the ebb and flow of the ocean, when I'm surfing and I see a flock of brown pelicans heading overhead, when I watch porpoises roll in the sea, when I watch a ghost crab scurry to a hole, I see the greatness of God. In his commentary on Psalm 111, St. Augustine suggests that we make our own list of where we see God's greatness. What would be on your list? If I asked you right now to take out pen and paper and make a list of where you see God's great works, what would you write? Would your family be on there or your vocation? A recent vacation maybe? A, a golf game perhaps? Though that I doubt. From what I hear, most of you are not Arnold Palmer. <clears throat> Maybe on your list a friend would be there, or something you saw in the mountains last summer, or maybe if you went skiing this winter. What would be on your list? John Calvin, the father of our Presbyterian theological tradition, wrote, however many blessings we may expect from God, God's infinite generosity will always exceed all our wishes and expectations. The God described in Psalm 111 does exactly this, exceeds expectations. The God described in this Psalm is powerful and present and faithful and generous and gracious. In this God, your God, my God, our God, is active in history. This God rescued the Israelites from slavery. This God fed the Israelites as they marched through the desert. And because this God is so very great, so present, so powerful, so faithful, so generous, so very gracious. The author of Psalm 111 can only utter praise. The Hebrew word for praise in this psalm is halal. And Halal is where we get our English word hallelujah. Halal means to be clear, to shine, to praise, to boast, to rave, to celebrate. Makes me want to kind of dance. That's the kind of praise the psalmist is talking about. The psalmist wants us to get down and do one of these numbers. And Psalm 111 is not just a little bit of praise. It's not whistling Dixie. This praise is a whole symphony of praise. The author, I think the author is in love with God and breathless over God's works. Imagine that in your own life, being in love with God, being breathless over God's works. The activist Wendy Wright 
once wrote about her experiences living, or visiting rather, visiting a homeless shelter during the Christmas season. She went there with her church. And every year they would go and sing Christmas carols. But she says that in that setting, songs of snowmen and Christmas list and hearty good cheer ring hollow. One year, while visiting the shelter and singing Christmas carols, Miss Wright met a middle-aged man, homeless, in the shelter who wore a dirty old jacket. She wrote that his perceptions of things due to either mental illness or addiction, well, his perceptions seemed doubtful. He then asked Miss Wright if she would sing his favorite Christmas song, O oh, Holy Night. Wendy agreed and began singing. She then writes, The crowded shelter gradually grew silent as he and I raised up our voices together. The man leaned on the edges of a tattered sofa about three feet from her, she writes. His eyes were closed and he was singing. As he sung, Wendy noticed that a change came over this man. And she writes, the tired creases of his street, weary face softened as he intoned the song. As he continued to sing, she writes, his face shone and tears fell gently from his lowered eyes. I knew at that moment, Wendy admitted, that his longing and my longing were one and that the burning for the fulfillment of the promise that I felt was not mine alone, but it is etched on the human heart. Whether she knew it or not, Miss Wright was offering praise to God. For God can take even a simple Christmas carol, even a seemingly ordinary event and turn it into a sublime occasion. God, even in the midst of ordinary, ordinary events, is ready for praise. This past week, I was waiting at a red light on US-1 up near the hospital, kind of just north of Lowe's, I mean, just north of the hospital near Lowe's. It was late in the day, and as you well know now, traffic has gotten fierce. A few horns I could hear around me in a town where one never used to hear horns. At the red light, I decided to do what many of us do. I decided to look at the drivers around me. I looked at the person on my left, and there was a fella eating a biscuit or a cheeseburger. I couldn't tell which. I looked to my right, and there was a woman with her head down, texting or Snapchatting or Facebooking or, you know, she was doing something. And surrounding us was the most beautiful blue sky. The sun, sun hung at about the four o'clock position, and there were three seagulls right here, and just a little farther to the west, to the right, there were some sable palms blowing yellow sun. It was so beautiful. And I thought to myself, we can get so caught up in our own little rat races, pursuing our own little agendas, <coughs> that we forget to look around, pay attention, and praise God. We can get wrapped up in our families, in our food, in social media, in politics, in the news, in the future, in vengeance, in the stock market. So, so wrapped up 
in what we don't have or what we don't get. That we can forget to look around, pay attention, and praise God. As you leave this sanctuary today and throughout this coming week, take some time to look around. Take some time to think about how God has intervened in your life. Take some time to reflect. Take some time to make a list of God's great works. And then, and then, take some time to offer praise. To God be the glory this day and throughout all eternity. Amen. Amen.
obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom are called by Christ. In baptism, God claims us as his own and seals us uh, to show us that we belong to him. That God frees us from sin and death and unites us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By the water and the spirit, we are made members of the Christ, members of the church, the body of Christ, and are joined to Christ's ministry of love, <coughs> peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. Good morning. On behalf of the session, it's uh, my distinct pleasure to present a number of individuals for a new membership with our church. One brief thing in my time here, we'll have 30, 30, 30 new members of our church family today. And so I think that's a record that you all are participating in. We're delighted to have them. So on behalf of the session, would the following individuals please come forward when your name is called. Zach Gonsalve, who will be joining us by both baptism and public profession of faith. Jen Gonsalve and the others that I will read are being received as members by reaffirmation of faith. Renee Bender, Ed Fox, Kelly Fox, Shelley Given, Sandra Kerr, Brenda O'Brien, Nicole Prosser, Stacy Scanlon, Bill Stansel, Marge Stansel, Matt Giles, Karen Giles, Brent Schink, and Don Schink. Also, the following individuals received by transfer of membership, Justin and Bethany Forbes from First Presbyterian Church, North Palm, Florida, Maxie Lee and Janet Lee from Trinity Presbyterian Church, Palm Coast, Florida, Mark Mender and Karen Mender, First Presbyterian Church of Grapevine, Texas, Ryan Murphy and Lindsay Murphy from First Congregation Church, Milford, Connecticut, Annie Parsons from Good News Church, St. Augustine, Florida. Susan Phillips from First Presbyterian Church, Asheville, North Carolina. Dick Trevlin and Linda Trevlin from Ancient City Baptist, uh, St. Augustine, Florida. And also the following to be received as affiliate members, Denise Molnar and Gary Molnar of Northminster Presbyterian Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is a great problem to have, right? <laughs> Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. In that covenant, God gives us new life we are guarded from evil and nurtured by the love of God and God's people. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. I ask you, therefore, in making your profession of faith or your reaffirmation of faith, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word, and showing his love, will you? With the whole church, let us confess our faith.
Together as one body, we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into heaven. From the third day, may be seated. From up here, it's pretty exciting. I want to do a Presbyterian minister's dance right up here to uh, see all these folks. Hunter and I generally do it together, but not today. So, <laughs> The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, eternal God, for your, for your nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. It was through the parting of the Red Sea that you brought the people of Israel out of bondage from Egypt and into the promised land. It was through baptism that your son Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and is led to us through death to resurrection and from the bondage of sin into eternal life. We thank you, living God, for your holy mystery of baptism. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit as a new creation in Christ. Amen. Zach, Zach do you desire to be baptized? Do you? Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Zach by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and to follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's Church? Do you? Do. For you, Zach, Jesus Christ came into the world. He did battle. He suffered. For you, he went through the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, he cried, it is fulfilled. And for you, he triumphed over death. For you. Zach, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, uphold your son and servant Zach. Give him love and wisdom, patience and endurance, strength and fortitude that he might serve you all his days. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. Zach, you are signed and sealed with the love of God. Amen. Amen. What are your words of welcome to this newest brother of ours, Zach? We welcome you into the life and work of our church. We look forward to growing with you in faith, hope, and love. We thank God for calling you to join the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please share the peace with one another.
Immediately following service today, you can welcome all of these new members in the courtyard with some light refreshments. You can get to know them, pass the peace of Christ, and extend the right hand of fellowship. Now we have the prayers of the people, and I'd like us to try something a little bit uh, different, if we could. When I was in seminary in Atlanta years ago, I had a wonderful mentor, a senior member of, uh, oh, well, a senior pastor of a large Presbyterian church, and here's how he had us pray for the prayers of the people. He would say uh, a brief word focusing how we might pray then we'd be, it'd be, the church would be silent for a short period of time while we lifted up whatever he was talking about. And then he'd have another, he'd uh, focus our prayer a little bit, and then we'd pray silently. I'd like us to do that together if we could. I have a short prayer that we'll begin with, and you'll know uh, as I ask us to focus our prayer, and then there's silence, you'll know that's the time for you to uh, lift up that particular concern to the Lord, if you would. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Give us grace, O oh Lord, to answer readily your call and to proclaim to all people throughout the world the good news of Jesus' salvation that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of your marvelous works. You who live and reign, the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. This Sunday, we give thanks for our brothers and sisters around the world who right now are worshiping you. Brothers and sisters who are black, who are yellow, who are brown, who are white. We lift them up to you and give you thanks for them. Pray for the parents and the youth here at Memorial who are deciding how to be healthy families, how to love each other, how to follow you. We lift them up. we remember teachers in all our schools. Teachers here at Memorial, teachers at elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. Lord, we ask that your mercy and grace would be upon them. Give them wisdom. 
give them energy, give them love. Be with your teachers, Lord. we are grateful for Flagler College, for the leadership, the administration, for students. We lift them up to you and ask for your blessing in their lives. Pray for Southwood School, for the calling that you've given this church. We pray that in the sandwiches that we take, there is love. And we ask that you take that love and those sandwiches and by a miracle of your grace, multiply the food and the love. For Southwood School, have mercy, Lord. Lord, many of our members here, brothers and sisters and you, are in nursing homes and hospitals or sick at home. We think of them now and lift them before you for your healing. Lord Jesus, you were a refugee once. So we pray for refugees in America and around the world. We pray for our members of Congress who are trying to decide what to do with refugees here. Lord, give our leaders wisdom. We lift them up to you. Give your refugees strength and love and patience. We lift them before you. Now, Lord, we are grateful that you hear our prayers, and we pray in your name, your prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Beloved, we have each received gift upon gift, grace upon grace. Scripture reminds us that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. At this time, let us bring forward our offerings and tithes. Will the ushers please come forward?
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our praise. And together we pray, saying, We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the beauty that fills our lives and for the grace that you give us to share with those around us, especially those in need. Continue to spark within us a spirit of compassion and love that we may give as generously as we have received. And in giving, know the blessing of making a difference. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the newest members of the church are making their way into the reception area, I would like to remind those of you who are uh, here to meet them, if you would, outside in the garden area to say hello to them, to shake their hands, and to enjoy light refreshments. Beloved, I charge you this day to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of Almighty God rest upon each of you this day and throughout all eternity. Amen. <laughs> 